This is the S&P 500 10-year overview readings for the years 2020 through 2029. It's currently September 24th, 2023, approximately 9 p.m. That's Eastern time. And the S&P 500 at the time of this reading, in the extended hours, or it's 4,320.06. 4, so the way that you want to you want to look at this 10-year overview reading, guys, you got to understand not each card, we're going to do timeline cards across, going horizontally across for each year. Each card will represent about a year's worth of time, but you have to keep in mind that not each card's energy is going to line up with exactly one year of time. That's just, that's silliness. So you have to keep that in mind and follow the sequence of events, chart behavior that we talked about. That will be very, very accurate. The timing, you have to give it plus or minus a year because we're looking at it from such a broad standpoint. Plus or minus about a year on timing, but follow the sequence of events when, whenever timing seems to be a little bit off. And also keep in mind, you should follow along with our uh, one month readings that you can get on our website, uh, Tarot for Traders. You can get them, you can, if you sign up for a free newsletter, you get the S&P 500 email to you, the monthly uh, prediction email to you uh, a month ahead of time. Uh, we're running roughly a 98% average accuracy, guys. That doesn't mean we see everything. It doesn't mean that we, or like the Yoda of the stock market. It just means that 98 out of 100 things that we see actually are, are to be true. So the overall theme and behavior for the S&P 500 over this 10-year period is a notable move higher. A lot of the time on such a broad scale, the Sun card will indicate the start of a rally, but I'd say based on, it's, it's notable, we'll, we'll continue moving higher over that 10-year period and it'll be a notable move on a multi-year scale. Energies that cross it. Um, so the Hierophant card on this scale, it, it could be a pop and drop, but you know, a pop and drop is more of like a short-term kind of thing. So from this standpoint, it could be that there's things having to do with Congress that slow down the rally. Um, because the, the, the Hierophant card will often indicate something to do with Congress as well. It's a, like a significator in my, my uh, tool book. It's a significator for Congress in a lot of cases. Overall, I'd say it's a bearish card, so it's kind of crossing against, and that makes sense. We should see a, a chart with like drops in it on the way up. That makes a lot of sense from the standpoint of a multi-year. Uh, okay, and so off of the highest high for the 10-year period, there's a significant decline taking us to what could be the, like, to, like the, from the high could take us all the way to the low. Uh, the high that we see within this 10-year period, there could be a decline off of it that takes us all the way to the low of the 10-year period. Either that or just a really significant bottom that will come to, but either way, there's going to be a really big decline off of the highest high. And then behavior around the low. So the lover's card is a prominent move higher, followed by a full retracement of that move. And again, we're thinking about that on the scale of a multi-year chart. So around the low, we likely see the low twice. Uh, within this 10-year period either that or it could be that we see it four times sorry twice or three times or four times could be one of those most likely it's that we see it twice but we'll be able to see that when we get into the SOMA pattern recognition markup portion of this later in the reading so 2020 we had a u-shaped dip that formed around the intersection of the perpendicular diagonal trend lines 2021 we had an unexpected move to the upside 2022 uh we have a lot of ground covered. The Prince of Swords is kind of directionally speaking, pretty difficult to determine direction without uh, additional cards. But what it does indicate is a lot of volatility and a lot of change, price change taking place. Uh, 2023, a decline that increases with momentum moving forward in time. 2024, uh, Princess of Swords, interesting. So the Princess of Swords in a lot of cases, it, it, it indicates a resistance level that's highlighted. And on the scale, in this case, it'll be on the scale of a multi-year chart. There's a resistance level that's highlighted. And, and the price change or the movement throughout like let's say several months time or however or maybe like a year's worth of time the movement going into that resistance level or coming out of it there's a lot of price change enough and, and type of price change and price behavior that allows for one to position themselves in both directions putting legs on at separate times and uh profiting from moves in both directions provided that you're nimble and you and you you know what you're doing and you have to have all the pieces ahead of you you have to follow technical analysis and you have to make sure that you have a, a you know risk tolerance it's, it's no different guys trading this way is no different than trading some other way when it comes to uh, like psychology as being the most important aspect okay see so and that makes sense so there's like this mean point here in 2024 and then in 2025 we have a decline through multiple support levels on a, on a multi-year scale so we'll see lower than this resistance but we should also see higher than this resistance in the not too distant future based on it being the princess of swords so this indicates like this could be this is a prominent move higher and a full retracement of that move back down we move higher through key resistance on a, on a multi-year scale and we break back down through it shortly thereafter uh, with a full retracement uh, back down to where that move higher started and this is a very similar energy from a thematic standpoint the very similar energy to the uh, lover's card which makes a lot of sense so it looks like we bottom we bottom out around 25 2025 2026 this would be kind of indicate uh, a bottom and then 2027 we have multiple failed attempts to break the key resistance that's again resistance on a multi-year scale a decline through multiple support levels or a decline creating multiple new resistance on the way down sharp decline standing out on a multi-day scale there in 2026 uh, 2028 and then in 2029 um, we have a rally so out of 2028 into 2029 out of that decline there's a rally into 2029 uh, but that rally does end in 2029 as well trade advisement i'm, I'm advised to trade around the breakouts on a multi-year scale and the following 10-year period it looks like we have crisscrossing this is a mixed kind of card but overall bullish and that would make sense this is looking pretty solid over time the s p 500 goes up that's the gradual overarching trend of the s p 500 so when you're looking at a uh, an s p 500 10-year reading you need to take that into account when reading it 
and understand that the lows here, the low indications here that we have in 2027 and 2028 don't don't necessarily indicate a low for the 10-year period, like a lowest low for the 10-year period. What they do indicate is a significant trough on a multi-year scale that takes place there. Um, so this looks really accurate, though. Um, we had this, not exactly a U-shaped dip, but similar we have a peak a trough and a peak in 2020 you can see we have this peak trough peak that's the uh priestess card followed by a notable move and an unexpected move higher we pretty much just went straight to the upside aside from one month out of the year really um and that was the star card and then we get into this more jaggedy behavior a lot of price uh, change covered um and it's kind of like back and forth jaggedy but in an overall very obvious direction to the downside that's the prince of swords um end of the year of 2022 we have this notable move to the upside or the beginning of a move to the upside which takes us into 2023 What's interesting is that we've seen this move to the upside take us into uh, halfway through the year of 2023. The overall theme for 2023 is the um, Prince of, of Cups, which is a, a decline that increases with momentum moving forward in time. Um, we actually see that here. We weren't able to do these cross-reading congruencies on the S&P readings before because we didn't have the 10-year done, but now we can. So this is a cross-reading congruency right here, meaning that the card from the 10-year uh, representing 2023 also in, it appears in 2023 not only does it appear in 2023 but it appears at a very pivotal mo moment right here in july this is the d this is the high for the year right so we have this pivotal moment here um where the, where the decline commences um pretty notable guys and that that also leads me to believe that we probably have more it gives me stronger which, the argument that we have a low at the end of the year it gives it more weight i'm starting to sense that i may have i may have interpreted this ace of swords wrong because it was so long ago um and i was interpreting ace of swords as like highs all the time but they're not highs all the time and then we have this rune here so the chances are if we do have a highest high again or the same high again it will be on the cusp of november december I'm not so sure that that's going to be the case what i am pretty certain of is a low at the end of the year the very end towards the very very end of the year um, based on what I'm seeing there, and that's holding pretty true, especially when you see this is this is giving us weight here. This decline that increases with momentum moving forward into a trough, and there's a trough right there on the cusp of 2023-2024. The Princess of Swords in 2024 indicates a lot of price change, probably to the upside, not necessarily to a high. Um, doesn't look like it's necessarily to a high. It'll be a prominent peak that stands out. Um, and then we have like a pop and drop somewhere between 24 and 25 and a sharp decline off of that uh, in the midst of that drop, a sharp decline through multiple support levels in 2025, taking us into a move higher that'll stand on a multi-year scale followed by a full retracement. And that, that's another possible location of like our next peak is in 2026 in the midst of a move higher. And then, well, our, our next peak after the one that takes place towards the end, towards the, and it'll probably be a higher peak than what takes place in 2024. And then we go into fit, multiple failed attempts to break through key resistance. Uh, decline pretty hard on in, in 2027 towards the end of the year. Decline continues in 2028 through multiple support levels. And then somewhere between 2028 and 2029, we have a rally that commences. It does look like that rally ends at some point in 2029. And we really have like mixed crisscrosses back and forth through the same price level over the following 10-year period. That's pretty interesting. But that's the S&P 500 for the 10-year uh, overview of 2020 through 2029. Let me know what you guys think, my friends. Guys, if you're interested in getting the monthlies, you can get the free re monthly report of the S&P 500 by going to our website on the homepage. Scroll all the way to the, the bottom and sign up for the free newsletter. You'll get the uh, S&P 500 monthly report with the highs and the lows to the day, as well as all the chart behavior and the trades that we see. You'll get it mailed to your email within the first week of the of the month before whatever month we're, we're reporting about. So for the December reading, you get it the first week of November. It's the earliest you can get it for free. If you want to, you want to get it earlier than that, um, you can also do that under our services, SOMETA posts. Click here to subscribe, 29 bucks a month, 249 for the year. Great way to, to support the channel. That and the rule of karma, my friends. And as always, guys, make sure to follow that rule of karma. You do so here on the resources tab, where we ask that you transmute some of that competitive energy of the stock market. 5% of the profits forward to one of these charities, transmuting that competitive energy into goodwill. And then 5% of the profits back to the channel saying thank you, having gratitude mentality and making way for more to arrive. That leaves you at 90%. Make sure to spend it out of love. As long as you do that, you keep a clear conscience. The universe will send it back to you tenfold for being an angel investor of this channel, my friends. I'll see you guys on the next one.